Apache offers several different options for controlling headers. To demonstrate, we're going to have an application running here that generates some headers and doesn't generate others. And then we're going to have a separate header configuration for Apache, independent of the main configuration file. That'll make it a little bit easier to keep the headers separate and to just include them in different virtual servers without having to copy and paste them. Inside of the configuration directory, the main configuration for the site is inside sites available. And for the application that we have here, we'll find that its configuration is in matilda.conf. And it's inside this file where I include the headers.com file. And that way here and the uh, virtual host for the HTTPS site and the virtual host for the HTTP site. And then if I had any other number of virtual hosts, I could just include the headers.conf and have consistency without having to replicate. So the file that I'm using is in a folder I created called conf. And here is several different examples of ways to use the headers. So we'll take a look at creating a header that isn't there. So I use HTTP headers plugin here. We'll browse to the site and it'll generate some traffic and then we'll look at to see the response headers for coming back. So this particular application generates some various insecure headers that we could fix like the XSS protection header is turned off when it should be turned on. And there's some headers that are missing, like the X-Frame Options header is missing, so we would want to add that. So some different things that we can, we can patch up here. Let's look at an example of adding a header. So to add a header, we can use the header statement and then say set. And that's going to set whatever the name of the header is. So if we wanted to set X frame options, we would just type in the name of the header. Now the next value is going to be the value of that header. So if we type in the same origin here, the header will have the value of X frame options. There'll be a colon, then a space, and then the word same origin exactly as we typed it. So let's save that file and then we'll restart the Apache service or reload the configuration in order to get it, the Apache service to read in our configuration. Let's go back over here and we'll clear this out, browse back to the page again the second time. And now you see the X frame options and you notice how Apache formatted it. It puts the colon in there and a space and then it puts the value so that the header has the the proper format. Okay, let's look at getting rid of a header that is there that maybe we don't want anymore. So here's an X powered by header. Maybe we want to get rid of those. And that header is being generated by the underlying PHP application server. So in that case, we can use the header unset example. And the way this one works is we type in header unset and then the name that we want to get rid of. Now we don't put any kind of value. We're just trying to unset the header. We don't need to have any sort of value associated with the header. So just putting the name is enough. Reload. Go back over and then we'll browse back out to the site. And then we'll notice that the server banner is there, but the X Powered by banner has been removed. All right, now let's take a look at overriding a header. So currently, the site already has the XSS protection header, but it's got the wrong value. 
So let's fix that, and we'll do that by replacing the header that's there. So we're going to do header, and then we're going to do set, and we're going to just replicate the header exactly. So this one is XSSS protection header, and we want the value to be one mode equals block. In order to get that value there, we use set, which will do the override. Then we'll clear this out here, browse back out to the site. And now you can see that the header has been overridden. So the application issued the header, but Apache changed it in flight before it got back to the browser. And then one more example, we'll look at conditional headers. There's lots of different kinds of conditional headers and these can get a bit complicated, but we'll just look at a very basic example. So we have the header and then what we can do is, is we can say that we're gonna set it, but only if it doesn't exist. We're gonna set this header only if it isn't already set by the application. So we'll say set if empty. And for this one, we'll just create a new header. And we'll give it a value of test. I'm going to browse out to the site. And now we go on here and we see that new header test was created. So let's try the, the same thing. And we'll try it uh, with cache control, a header that's already there. So we'll say the name of the header in cache control, and we'll say private. Actually, we'll do uh, a really secure setting for a, a dynamic page, like a PHP page, which would be no store, no cache. Now, in this case, the header's already there, so Apache won't be able to override the header. So we see cache control is still set to public because the application server had already set the value and the set if empty only replaces if the header is actually empty or non-existent. Let's go back over here and we'll fix that particular example because in our case for a PHP page we would actually want the cache control to be no store no cache so to fix this problem we would just say set and then that would be the right way to do it but you can imagine a situation where you essentially have the application set the proper value which would be no store no cache from the application's point of view but we would have Apache override that to say cache control public for files like JavaScript and style sheets and pictures and images that we really do want to cache in the browser for performance reasons while still maintaining no store, no cache for the application files. So we can kind of flip things around and uh, get everything configured so it's all gonna work out no matter which kind of file is, is being generated. And in that way we can have some conditional caching. But of course you can also actually do conditional caching using the files directive and the location directive. And so, like I said, this can get a bit more complicated, but let's fix our cache control. We'll save these settings and reload, and then go look at the, the results. All right, so now we're able to override the cache control and have the proper setting for a PHP page, which would be the no store, no cache. So hopefully these various examples help you see how you can combine the Apache header features in various ways. 
And if these features are not available on your Apache server, then you probably just need to enable the mod headers plugin uh, by using the a2nmod command to turn that on.